Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today to learn about using masks in PaintShop Pro. We've been asking in our registration form, whenever you get the registration email, what topics you'd like us to cover. And we've had a very high number of users requesting a webinar on masks, so that's what we're doing today, and we hope you find it informative and that it will help you improve your skills in PaintShop Pro. So if you joined us for our October webinar on scripts, you might remember our PaintShop professional, Carol, who conducted the training. She's also volunteered to run today's webinar, which is a great fit because not only is she very experienced at teaching classes on PaintShop Pro, she's also quite knowledgeable on the topic of masks, using them regularly in her workflow. I didn't introduce myself either. Um, if you guys are attending these webinars that we've started on PaintShop Pro regularly, you're probably familiar with me as well. I'm Melanie Hyde. I'm the product marketing manager for uh, the photo products at Corel. And we've been trying to run webinars on a monthly basis now. So um, if it's your first time attending a webinar, continue to look out for our webinar emails, or you can go to our Discovery Center, Corel's Discovery Center. The address is learn.corel.com slash webinars, and you'll be able to see our upcoming webinars as well as um, recordings of our past webinars if you're interested. All right, so we've got a couple of incentives for you attending our webinar today. Um, I'm gonna let Carol take control in just a few seconds, but I wanna let you know about these special offers first. So we, you can get 40% off the purchase of PaintShop Pro and PaintShop Pro Ultimate, uh, whether you're upgrading or you're buying it for the first time. And Carol's also generously providing her photo mask script for free. With this script, you'll be able to create, create your own masks in PaintShop Pro with one click. So I'm gonna send all the details out to our, uh, or of our incentives in a follow-up email that you'll receive tomorrow. So keep your eyes peeled for that. We're also gonna offer a discount on all content within the PaintShop Pro 2018 welcome tab if you own PaintShop Pro 2018. So there's a bunch of different um, Corel applications, creative content, plugins and scripts in there. Uh, we're just excluding third-party apps from that discount. You'll also be able to review this webinar recording if you want to go back and watch it later or take it slower. Um, it'll be posted to youtube.com slash Corel PaintShop Pro, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow. Again, or you can go to learn.corel.com slash webinars and I'll explain all of this in that follow-up email. Um, you'll also be able to find our webinar recording there. So with all that said, um, Carol, you can feel free to go ahead and take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you. So the, the topic today is about masks and masks are really powerful because it gives you uh, many options to manipulate your photos or your, your project. It doesn't have to be with photos only. So what are masks? The masks, they work just about the same as when you are using masking tape when you're painting. So if you want to paint, uh, for example, a wall, and you would like to have a little design in on it that is not painted. So, for example, you start with a white wall, and you want to paint it in blue. You put some masking tape, you paint over, and then you can remove the tape, and the area where the tape was has been protected and will appear as without paint. It works about the same in Paint Shop, except that, well, you don't have the mess of the paint, and you can also manipulate the mask uh, much easier than you could with masking tape. So basically a mask will appear in the layers palette as a black or white or gray layer. So for example, I have just an image, just any photo that you have, and you can go to the layers in the menu and you get go load save mask and then load mask from disk. This will give, give you the option to choose one of the masks that that is uh, that are on your computer and these are the ones that came with uh, Paint Shop 2018. So you can see there are all in black and white or gray or shades of gray. So whatever I choose, let's say I choose this mask here, the flower. Notice that 
The mask itself seems to be square, but it will stretch because my photo is rectangular. So you can do use it that way. You could have different settings. So if I wanted to use the mask as is, obviously the mask seems to be smaller than my photo. It could fit the layer or fit the canvas. In this case, my layer is the same size of the canvas. So one way to remember how to use mask is that black will block. Just a little something to remember. Black will block. So whatever is black on the mask will prevent the photo or the layer from showing. So let's just see what it looks like when I apply it. So you can see I have my photo here and it created a group and this is my mask. So wherever there is black, it blocks the photo from being seen. So the end result is this. So wherever it's black, it will block completely. Where it's white, it will show completely. And if there was any shade of gray, it will give partial transparency. So you will partially see the photo. So let's just undo this. And I can do, again, load save mask. And this time I'll find another one that has more gray. So for example, this one, you can see this has some white in the center, some black in the corners and different shades of gray. This is what it will look like. So the end result is an area where I can see the image, an area where the image is completely removed and some other areas where you can see the image partially. So of course it will depend on the actual effect that you want to create. For example, this mask might not be the best if my subject is on the side. In that case, I would probably want to find a mask that will have the visible area around my subject or have an image with my subject more in the center. Okay, let's undo this and go look at different settings in these mask options. Okay. So let's go back to my flower. I said that the black will block and in this case it will block on the outside of my photo and show the center. I can invert the transparency. I couldn't go this way and in this case the center will be blocked and I will it will display the outside well of course that's how it works it's not it's not the best for this particular photo but it could be great if I had a background that I want to use as a mask um, as a frame I should say okay let's undo again Let's see if I add a new raster layer and maybe I'll just put a layer in red. In this case, I can go again to the same mask and I can block the center. So it will remove the center area. And now I can see my photo through. See, my photo is still intact. And even if it was through the the mask, the photo itself is unchanged. So for example, uh, I'll just do another example for you. And I'll remove this. I have a background layer. Let's change that to a regular raster layer. And I will add my the same mask, but to remove on the outside. One thing that is interesting is that I can still move my photo if I want to place it more visibly. And for that, I'll have to use the pick tool. I cannot use the move tool simply because it's a group and in the group, everything is linked together. So if I was trying to move the photo, it will move the mask. 
but if I'm using the pick tool, I can move my photo. Of course, in this case, I'm kind of stuck with the edge here, uh, but it will depend on the kind of mask and the kind of photo you might want to get. All right, I will just undo and go back to my original photo. So this is the way you can use a layer, a mask layer that is already installed. However, you can create your own masks. For example, I'll just open an image, about 600 by 1,000, which would be close enough to the size or the format of my photo. I will flood fill that with white. Let's just get the white. And then I will make, for example, a star. And I'll make it in black. So this is my a new image, and I can use this image as a mask. In this way, I can go to, whoop, I have to hide it, not hide it, but I'll just minimize it. And I remember here it's image number two. So I just activate my photo, go to layers, and now I can have new mask layer from an image. And here I have a list of the images I have open. By default, it always opens the same image, which you don't necessarily want to mask your image with your own image. So you go to the other one, image two. In this case, it said invert mask data. So we had that option earlier. So black will block. So if I use my mask, the one I just created with a black star on a white background, I will get this. So you can see how my mask here is exactly the way I drew it. So it cut out what was black because black will block. If I go the other way and add the mask layer from image, Maybe I should remove the autosave. I go again with image two and I invert the mask data. Then I get something like this. Well, of course, I don't see much. So I can go to my layer, activate the pick tool, and move my photo so I can have my subject showing through the area I wanted. Okay. Okay, so let's undo this again. Now let's manipulate our mask layer. So in this case, I'm going to convert this to a raster layer. And I will simply adjust and add a Gaussian blur. And I can blur my star. Something like this, or even a bit more. So now what will happen is that the black will block, the white will show, and the gray will just give partial transparency. Since my subject is at the bottom, so maybe I'll just move this around here. Hopefully, it will be showing my fisherman. Again, activating my photo, go to layers, new mask layer from image. I go with image two. And my star was black, so I don't really want to block that. So I want to invert the mask data. And I get something like this. So you can see how this will give you really a flexibility to uh, display your photo.
And after that, if you have a new raster, another raster layer that can be placed underneath, you could have, let's say, a black layer or a white layer or anything in between. You can pick a color from the image and <clears throat> and change it. So I can get the orangey and have some effects. What's interesting with the mask is that only the layers or the photos below the layer below the mask in that group will be affected by this mask. So it allows you to have more than one mask. We'll look at that a little later. Okay, so I'll what I'll do, I'll just close these just so it doesn't take oops. Okay, so for example, if I have an image and I let's say I flood fill this with brown and I have another raster layer and I'm going to just create it with a lighter color. So I have two similar layers. I can apply a mask that will give me some textures. Some of the masks that come with uh, Paint Shop 2018 include a few of those. So I can go back to Load Mask and I have something like here. For example, you can see it's not necessarily a texture that will uh, give a, a definite area for a photo or something, but it's a texture that will be covered covering the whole area. So what it will look like is this. So of my light beige or pinkish area with this mask, some areas are going to be hit, uh, covered more, some are going to be covered less. Everything that is black will be blocked more, whatever is lighter gray, will show through. And that's how I can create a combination. And I can change the, uh, the color in the background and this area will stay the same. So if I wanted to change, let's say the color to, let's see a dark whatever, I can change the color and you can see how it combines. So it, you combine the masked area with another layer below. Once you're done, you can always keep your group, your mask group together. Or when you're happy, you can always right click, merge, and merge the group. So in which case, now you have only one layer and your mask is actually disappeared. You cannot manipulate it anymore. If you had a photo, you cannot move your photo anymore under the mask, but you have only one layer to take care of. Okay, so this is a very simple way to use mask. And you can use your mask and basically have various um, various images used for your photo. You can also make combinations. Earlier we had a photo. So I'll just open this photo. Sorry. Nope. Uh, library. Libraries, pictures. So I have this photo I had earlier. And let's say that I, ha I want to open a different image. Let's say I'm gonna have flowers. 
you can always use a photo, even if it's in color, as a mask. The only difference is that Paint Shop will treat it as a black and white. So I can use my photo, go to Layers, Mask, from Image, and this is the 57, so it's not this one, I'll use the other one. And I can combine something like this. So you can see, you can play around. You mask layer, you can also adjust the opacity. Because your mask layer can be treated pretty much like an average raster layer, except for the colors. So I could use the opacity. I could change, for example, the brightness contrast. So, right. see, I, if I lower the brightness, it will turn darker. If I increase the contrast, sometimes I can get something else. You can really, really manipulate this uh, mask layer the way you want. And, and in the end, you can really combine that to get something very different. Let's undo this again. Okay, so I'll just leave it there. As far as masks are concerned, there are some templates that come with uh, Paint Shop Pro with the latest versions. I think it started in version 19. And you can open new templates. And I have a few. Now where? Some of them are free. I have one here that is downloaded and installed. I open it. And if you look at the layers palette, you have several masks. You see, you have a masks, mask here that will be allowing you to put a photo on the top left picture or spot. Then you have another one for the top right, etc. The beauty of this is that even if I have a photo that is larger than this area, it will not show through the other one. So let's just make it, give it a try. So I will just select because my photo is really big. And take this one, I'll copy with Control C. I go to my template and I'll go under the mask layer. So it says image one, basically it's just a placeholder. And I will do control V to place it. You can see where my photo is. You don't see it on the template. Why? Simply because it's not showing through the little hole. I have to move my photo. So I'll use my pick tool and move it in that area. Here. So I have my photo here. Let's do the same thing with just the sunset or the sun area. So I'll deselect with Control D. With my selection tool, I'll just select the sun on top, copy it, Control C, and I'll go to another area here. So under this layer, I go underneath, because if I put it on top, it won't, it won't mask. It's like putting the masking tape on top of your paint. That won't work. That won't mask anything. And then I'll place it again. Again, it doesn't show simply because it's not lined up. I'll use my pick tool, move it, and I have it in the right location. I can do the same thing with the flowers. So I'll take a section. I could use the whole photo if my photo was a little smaller or if I want to manipulate the photo afterward. 
and I'll go to another mask and I go under the mask copy whoops I guess it didn't call I didn't copy copy it and with my pick tool I'll move it here so you can see that even if my photo is too large or larger than the spot available it's not going through the other side okay now let's see what happens if I was to put it if I activate my layer my mask layer and I put my photo what will happen well in this case it's still underneath this cover area so if I was to remove the cover you can see that it's not just in the right area and it means also that it might show in the other spots okay so if that happens which it's possible it's very simple you just drag your layer underneath the mask and the problem is solved see it's really simple in that way so you can repeat this with as many mask groups that you have and in this case the placeholder like image 3 or uh, image 4 whatever you can just remove them they really are there only to tell you where to put your image uh, because you cannot have just a mask really and nothing underneath because then you won't see and it's just going to be blank and you'll be wondering what's going on so this is the way you can uh, manipulate or use the templates and place your photo where you want you can move them around and if you want to have the photo from this group and you want to go somewhere else you can just drag it and go to another group so instead of being on top I'll move it at the bottom you can always rearrange your photos that way nothing is set nothing is permanent as long as you don't merge anything you still have the option to change and move your layers around in your photos too okay so i hope that's uh clear so far not confusing anybody so i'm going to close this and i'm going to show you a few other tricks that are really kind of fun so i'm going to just duplicate this photo and resize it simply so it won't take as much resources okay so I have my background I'll just convert that or promote it so I have a raster one thing you can also do is draw your own masks and for that you might want to use here the little black and white so you have black and you have white and we can draw our own mask to showcase where we want so in this case for example if I had a mask it's possible that the area would be in the center but it's not the center that I want to show I want to show mostly this person or at least that side of the photo well there is a way you can add here a mask you can add a new mask layer like we did earlier on top you had from image but you can also have hide all or show all so for example if I want to show all you can see I have a white layer a white mask it doesn't make any difference on my on my image because black will block so white doesn't do anything but I can use my paintbrush tool that I have to load it's just a little slow 
and I have here just using the round and that's a bit big okay so I have I'll just lower the hardness so I have a soft edge and if I paint in black you can see that it will erase my photo well it's not really erasing it it's just masking it so I can decide that I want to mask this area by creating a black area and that will allow me for example to add some text a poem or a quote let's undo this and let's remove the mask altogether now let's add another mask but this time I will hide all so notice that this time my mask is black black will block that's why I don't see anything in order to show what's underneath I have to paint in white so I'll just switch the colors and I will draw in white you can see wherever I want that's one other way to create a mask and showcase wherever you want on your photo so after that you can add a new raster layer place it below completely below and flood fill with black and then you have room for your text again so it's a matter of do you want to show the photo or do you want to show a frame around the photo it will de determine whether you want to, to create black on white or white on on black you can also manipulate your mask layer again with a blur so for example if I go to adjust blur Gaussian blur notice how my edges now are softer because I added a blur to the edge so my edges are not as uh, as defined I can go back to my brush increase the hardness so there won't be any feathering and maybe smaller and I can draw a shape if I want you can see my layer my mask and it will show through of course it will depend on what you have underneath you might not want to, to do anything like that but you might have another part of your photo that you want to showcase in which case you can brush in white again so this is one other way that you can manipulate your um, your mask so one pro one little fun project that you can create is for example if you have a Facebook header um, just I don't have I think I misplaced this size but let's say that it's about something like I think it's 800 by three three 340 this is a header okay so let's say I want to add a new mask where it will hide all doesn't matter we will can we will be able to play around right now I have it in all black but what I want to do is get a gradient so I'll take a black and white and at an angle of 90 and I will flood fill this mask you can see now that one area is going to be black one area will be white I can also oh, 
with this now I would like to add a photo so let's go and I'll just take this image or this layer I'll copy it and place it under the mask and I will just use my pick tool and well I don't see my little fisherman very much that's okay I can go and mirror horizontal and I have my fisherman on this side so what I can do is for example I still have do I still have those flowers no um, let's say that I just want to add another sunset photo and maybe I want to have this one again I'll just just resize it for convenience I'll copy it and I won't put it inside my mask I'll just put it on top so I can align it that way and I can close my group just move my layer below so you have two photos that are showing the top one is only showing partially because of my mask while the other one is showing partially because it's partially covered but it's the whole thing I can change that I can change the colors I can uh, do whatever I want to my photo and I can change the photo if I can open another one and maybe I want to have let's try another one that is here again I'll just resize it for convenience you don't have to it's just easier and instead of this hot air balloon I put the other one well I have my son on the right so maybe I'll just flip it just so I can see it better it's a great way if you want to combine sometimes two photos uh, together in this case if you look closely at first glance it almost looks like a single photo because the colors are kind of similar and my fisherman looks good again my mask group is still available for me to manipulate and I can move my little fisherman even more as long as I'm using the pick tool and something like that so you can create like this for example a Facebook header and you can have some photos and you can change the photos you can have a scenery where you went somewhere and you can have a photo of yourself or your kids or your dog or such and you can just alternate and change them the mask layer can also be manipulated right now it's going to be let's see I have scale I can change here if I squeeze like this notice what happens I have more white on one side if I move it this way I have some black so if I want to show more I could also use my selection tool select that area on my uh, mask layer and with the white I can flood fill and here you can see how my mask has been edited I deselect and I have a different look at least on the mask there's more emphasis on this area and gradually the gradient will fade in the other way hey 
So these are kind of the basics of using masks using the Paint Shop Pro. You can use the masks that are already, uh, well, right now I'm, so the masks that are already on your computer part of your Paint Shop or any other PSP mask file that you might have downloaded, added, purchased, or created. And you can also use a mask from an image. So if you created already an image in black and white and grayscale, or even a colored image, you can use it. Or you can go from scratch and hide all or show all. So you start with either a black or a white mask that you will paint on using either the other. So black on white or white on black and any kind of shade of gray to give you a really custom look on mask. So those are the basic ways. And I also have currently until the end of February a challenge it's called a love story challenge and it will be um, it's available and it's really using masks for seven days in seven different projects so we have masks that are uh, part of templates we have masks that you can create yourself to create some scrapbook pages if you want to give it a try and it's completely free uh, if you want to register you can do that directly in um, on my site and there's a direct link it's called scrapbookcampus.com slash love because it was all about love stories so you can showcase your loved ones it's completely free and it runs for seven days with tutorials and uh, sub some supplies and a lot of ideas and inspiration to use masks in very unique ways to create your projects. So that kind of sums up the um, this presentation on mask, at least the base, the basics of it. And uh, I don't know at this point, Melanie, if we do have any question. Thanks, Carol. That was a great presentation. We do have some questions. Um, I'm just going to read them in order here. Uh, I thought a lot of these questions I decided I'd let you answer either because I don't know myself or because I think everybody, um, I was getting a lot of the same questions and I think reading them out loud um, and, and getting an answer out loud benefits everybody who's attending today. Sure. So uh, the first question I have is, is there a hotkey for inverting masks? Um to go from black and white to white and black. Uh, I thought there was one. I, th I thought there was one. Uh, let's see. Load. Oh, here. Invert mask adjustment. So shift K. I knew I saw it. So I would have, you have to have your, your mask layer active to have this option. So in this case, let's just try it. Shift K. Whoops. <laughs> and you can see how it switched. Great. Thank you. And can you use gradients in a mask? Yes, we just did. Here we used a gradient which was black to white. Of course, you can use a color, but it won't be as precise because the gray the, the mask itself will be created with grayscale. So as long as you have black and white and gray, you can use a gradient. You, we could have used it in a different shape. Right now we use a linear, but we could have uh, changed that. For example, um, we can go back to that black and white. Instead of being a, a linear, we could have used it this way, for example. So mm -hmm. we can, let's try this one. So instead of black and white, we could have, well, black and white in lines, we could have just had it like this so you can see how it looks. The effect is obviously different, but it depends on what you want to get. 
Great. I had another question about using gradients in a mask, and now I know you can do that from the same material properties um, box that you had open there. Right. I, the question is specifically, though, if you can do that, if that's available in X8. I'd have to go back and... Oh, um, yes. Yes, I think it's been available for years. I thought so, too. So yeah. um, that answers that then. This um, person specifically says they can't see it. So I can maybe address that after the... Um, the webinar on my own and make sure that that they can or or uh, I can be uh, I can probably be contacted also if the person needs some uh, more hands-on help perfect and can you undo a group that you create or show how you would undo a group yes well it depends on what you want to do so for example uh, you can ungroup you can right click on the top group and you have ungrouped layers in this case you have everything left separately so it doesn't have the same effects of course uh, you have kind of the mask here seems to be staying as a mask but it will mask everything below so it might not be what you want to get so but you can un ungroup them if you want okay thank you um, how do you copy an already existing mask in one layer to another layer in the same image okay that's a good question okay let's do this so we have a mask here let's see here on this layer i'll just add a mask just hide all i can copy so Control c and let's go on top of this one and paste it as a new layer and I can just remove this one. So I can like to mask, no. So I can have here, uh, let's just stretch out those layers. So you can see how now I have the same mask here that was there. Does that answer the question? I think it does. Uh, I have a lot of questions coming in about text as well. So can you use text as a mask? Can you use black text black text as a mask? Yes, but per like the mask here is not a vector, but you can certainly add uh, to it. So for example, let's just um, okay, this is black. Let me just invert it. okay. I think it does the auto save on me. Have lots of images. Okay, so I'll just invert. So I'll have it uh, white here. I'll just hide the other ones. Okay, so I'm just going to be working on this one layer. I could add my text and I'm not going to have any stroke color and if I want to have here text okay it's in black right now it's just a vector uh, hmm. let's see if I convert it can I that's I thought I could wonder if I could merge it below no but if you cannot do it directly as is like this um, there there are other ways for example you can copy and whoops wrong one copy your text I'll just close some images gonna go faster and I have it here so if I have my text, I can just, okay, let's undo this. I'm just going to select all so I have the same size. Copy, Control C, go as a new layer. And I want to have some white, so I'll just add a new raster layer. And let's go in my palette so I have some white. 
place it underneath and now I have an image that I can use as a mask so I can hide these and I can add from image and that was my latest image and you can see here my I have a mask that's kind of interesting too that sometimes you might have a mask inside of a mask which might be a good time where you want to uh, ungroup the layers because sometimes you just have too many layers and you can remove these so, and you can see how I have a mask now that has text that goes through it's a little not as obvious um, I kind of wonder let me just try something that I never tried I'll just flood fill with white I don't know if using the text tool but not using it as a vector maybe if I use it no no maybe as a selection I go text I accept it you can see how it's floating but now I just have to fill with the black so that's another way that I wasn't sure if it was working but thanks to the question let's now we have an answer that might be faster than going through the motion of creating a separate image as a mask thanks Carol um, few people asking the difference between raster and vector okay a uh, raster is made of basically pixels so uh, I'll just make a little demonstration for that uh, now where do I have an image here okay I'll just take a little piece of the image and if I zoom in you can see how everything is little squares and if I decide to enlarge those squares are just going to enlarge that is what a raster is it's basically like a painting or a photo it's it's just as is this is where the color is there's this is where the little black dot is the little white dot is a rest a vector layer is more is made of um, okay just imagine the difference between trying to make a circle out of Legos and making a circle out of an elastic or rubber band so the vector does not go with the pixels per se it's um, let's see Doo -doo 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 -doo. okay it's just okay so if I have an image and I have a vector if I create it as a vector what happens is that I can manipulate it and if I in enlarge it it won't it won't distort so I can just make my edges because it's not like it says this is a pixel a little square and I have to enlarge a square it's more like okay I have to get a line from this point to this point no matter how so the vectors have the ability to be resized and turned around and it only says okay you have to go from this point to this point so it doesn't matter if you start with a raster it's just like little those little blocks and when you want to turn the blocks like oh well that that line doesn't line up anymore uh, as much so I don't know if I I would have to find a, another way maybe to explain it but rasters are just like definite defined pixels that's where they are you can add effects to raster layers while vectors you cannot have the same effects but you have the advantage of having more of a crisper lines and so you can manipulate them 
until you are happy and then you convert them to a raster so you can add for example a texture or shadows or bevel or something like that i hope i'm a little i'm clear thanks carol uh we have five minutes left so let's read a few more questions we're not going to get to them all today there's a lot of questions coming in but as i normally do any questions that we that i haven't answered uh, privately or that Carol's not covering now, I will uh, work with Carol to make sure that in the follow-up email tomorrow, we send out answers to the questions that were unanswered. So, is it possible to create a mask using the shape of an object on a photo? For example, if you have a, a photo of an apple, a color photo of an apple, would you be able to use the shape of an apple to create, the shape of the apple to create the mask? Uh, yes, I guess it, you'll have to manipulate the photo of the apple to make sure that you have, first of all, a black and white, and if you want to have it well defined, and you might have to either paint over it or something like that. Um, let's see if I have a photo maybe in the flowers. Um. So for example, if I have this photo, uh, if I want to have the outline, I would probably want to have it either redrawn because this color is not very um, contrasting with the background. If the photo of the apple, for example, is on a white background, then I would work very well as is. Otherwise, the person will have to probably adjust either brightness contrast threshold or whatever I mean it will depend on the photo to start with okay thanks carol um can you use masks with adjustment layers mm, good question I think so. Oh, yes. Uh, because the adjustment layers, when you think of it, they are, in a way, some kind of mask. So let's just talk okay, this one. If I go to layers, uh, adjustment layer, brightness contrast, whatever adjustment I make. If you can see, it kind of works like a mask here. So it is white. If I was to paint in area uh, in black, then the adjustment will not be applied where that black area is because it's blocking. So it's not gonna show. Uh, same thing will happen if I was to uh, paint this layer, which is an adjustment layer, but I could put a gradient too. It would work. It works as a mask, even though it's not called a mask. The difference between uh, using a mask in an adjustment layer as is, is that the adjustment layer will affect everything below and it's not in a group. I could group it. So I could, for example, uh, go here and, uh, no. No, oh, yeah. where is it? There's a place where I can create a group probably in layers, new raster, oh, where is it? There is a way to create a group, where is it? It's hidden. New mask, new layer group. Okay, so for example, if I, well, it's because it's a background. So if I have new layer group, I could move my adjustment layer inside the group and now it will affect only this layer. So if I had another layer below, then the adjustment layer will not affect the other layer. So the adjustment layers have the same uh, properties basically as the mask, except that they are not uh, automatically created in a group and will affect everything below and they're not called a mask. Thank you for that. So it is, I've got 12.59 p.m. as my time. So I think we'll cut the question short now uh, and just thank everybody for attending. I'm pleased to announce that Carol will also be hosting our March webinar. 
which is going to be on Paint Shop Pro's picture tubes. So you should be receiving a registration email shortly, and I hope that uh, you can all attend if you're interested in learning more about picture tubes. So, which are, which are different than what many people think. Yes, they're very a very powerful tool in Paint Shop Pro. Um, so again, there's a recording that's going to be available tomorrow on YouTube, um, as well as Curl's Discovery Center. I'll send out the links to those as soon as we've got the recording uploaded. Um, or sorry, I will send them out tomorrow with the follow-up email. The follow-up email goes exactly uh, 24 hours, goes out 24 hours after this webinar has started. So it'll be at 12 p.m. EST. Um, if I don't have the, the recording uploaded to Discovery Center or to YouTube by that time, I won't be able to provide a direct link, but I will at least point you in the right direction and you should be able to find them on one of those two platforms. Um, that's you get 40% off the latest versions of PaintShop Pro and PaintShop Pro Ultimate if you're looking to upgrade or buy new for the first time. That link will also be sent out in the follow-up email. Um, a discount on all content within the PaintShop Pro 2018 welcome book minus third-party applications and you'll get a link to Carol's photo mask script completely free. Um, Carol mentioned her love story challenge as well. So Carol, what was the link to your love story challenge again? Uh, it's, I think it's in chat box. It's uh, scrapbookcampus.com slash love. Correct, yeah. So I'll also provide that link in the follow-up email tomorrow. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. So again, thank you so much and hope to see you next month. Thanks, Carol. Thanks.